So this is an overview of USD from more of an artist's perspective. Uh, in this case, we're inside Houdini, and we're gonna run through how USD helped us in the effects department. So here, I've got a single uh, USD import node, which is loading in most of the things for this particular shot. Uh, you can see that um, according to the geometry spreadsheets, I've got six primitives. And if I middle click on the node, you can see that I've got six packed USD primitives. Um, in terms of which six are being exposed, what I've done is I've loaded up the high level USD file for this shot. And then I've used the tree view here to bring up a very quick lister for all the available things. And in this case, I've gone down into the set uh, section and I've loaded in six assets. I can see that while these are all fairly high resolution, uh, high polygon counts, uh, the way that this is exposed to Houdini, it's all fairly fast and real time to manipulate. In order to go through a more specific use case of why we would uh, need these things and how we would modify them, in this particular shot, FX was asked to, uh, to replace the ground with some cobblestones. So if I uh, move down to here, you can see the start of this network. So what I've done is I've got uh, a similar USD node. In this case, rather than bringing in six things, I'm just loading in the one thing, which is the ground planes for this shot. Uh, and then <clears throat> in another USD node, I'm bringing in just the buildings, which I'll use uh, to basically uh, cull cobblestones later on. Uh, the other thing I'm doing is I'm bringing in the cobblestones themselves. So we had the asset department make us uh, seven cobblestone variations, which you can see here. Uh, a nice uh, byproduct of how uh, the USD plugins have been implemented in Houdini is they, for the most part, respect standard Houdini idioms. So uh, a little trick that I've used here is uh, I've rather than using the tree view to select the uh, the model name that I want, I'm using the variable $OS, which is the the operator string. So what that means is it uses the name of this node, and it's now going to look that up as the print path. Uh, the reason I've done that is so that uh, once I've done this for one node, I can then go copy, paste, 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 and then each of these things will then automatically bring in the model which is which is required, which is very handy. Uh, <clears throat> so what I do is I bring in all of these cobblestones, I then transform them to or be roughly within a single unit square, and then we'll merge together. So now I've got uh, seven packed USD primitives that are all sitting on top of each other. Um, you can see, glancing on down the graph, that uh, ultimately this just goes to a standard copy to points SOP. So it's all pretty straightforward vanilla Houdini. Uh, the one bit of special source required is this USD instance prototype SOP. So this just tags the primitives uh, with a string attribute so that these can be identified later on to uh, USD. Uh, on this side, it's fairly straightforward workflow. So I'm using so again, I bring in the ground plane, uh, then, uh, but because these are packed primitives, I've got to convert these into polygons for Houdini to be able to modify them. So I'm using a USD unpack node. So now this is uh, 36 polygons. Uh, I then get rid of all the interior polygons with a divide. Then I use a second divide to generate the, uh, all the subregions, which are there. Uh, then a few standard style Houdini tricks. Uh, including, up to this point, uh, setting an up, an n, and a p-scale attribute. So that if I look through the camera, because this is a fairly small set, and turn on point normals, you can see that I'm using this now to, to orient these cobblestones. So then what I do is I then, using each of these points, I then choose one of these seven cobblestones, and I then instance them on. And you can see that I've done a bit of trickery here so that I'm grabbing, uh, because I've got seven cobblestones, I'm grabbing one seventh of the total bricks and I'm uh, randomly uh, scattering those things on. Uh, I then merge them all together. So there's all my cobblestones and I can see that this is 343,000. Uh, and then I finally uh, write that out using a uh, USD output node. So that's the end of the Houdini side and we can look at what that's generated on disk so if I look over to where these, where these cobblestones have been published, I can see that uh, I know that that file is version 22, and uh, that entire asset of the 330,000 uh, bricks is a 12 meg file. So that seems fairly small, uh, and that's uh, fairly small considering the, the amount of bricks there. Uh, let's see how long it takes to actually load that. So uh, I'm gonna load this into USD view, so I'm gonna hit enter. One, 
two, three, and there it is. So now I can look across and sure enough, there's my 330,000 uh, bricks. Uh, a nice uh, uh, byproduct of how um, USD instancing is exposed to the user is that uh, it doesn't show you all the transforms in one big uh, vomited outliner because that would ultimately be useless. You'd be unlikely to be wanting to, to modify, modify these things individually after the fact. What you are likely to want to do is to be assigning shaders to each of these bricks, um, but in fact, probably not to the bricks individually, but to each of the instances, which is being duplicated many times across this setup. Uh, that's exactly how it, it's exposed to the user. So if I expand this prototypes uh, folder, you can see that here are my six bricks. Uh, it's exposed exactly the same way inside inside Katana, so that uh, the lighting artist or the surfacing artist can just assign uh, seven shaders onto each of these things, and they will all be correctly randomized and uh, thrown out against the scene. Uh, and that's uh, a pretty quick overview of how USD looks to artists.